Hello, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel, I'm SimTwitch and welcome back to Project Cars 2 at the Zoo High International Circuit. And this circuit, I think, may be the most forgotten in the game, and also, in my opinion, one of the worst in the game. Um, I did not enjoy this whatsoever, this track. Um, it's just straights and hairpins, really. Um, straights, hairpins, and kinks. And, um, didn't enjoy it whatsoever. So we started in the Diablo GTR, uh, the GTO car, or the car in the GTO class, and that was a big mistake. It just was too quick for this circuit, I think. And um, then later we swap over to a slower car, which we'll see later in the video. So straight out of the pit, I negotiated in turn one. And we got to what I would call turn two. Although they'd probably classify it as like turn four or something like that. And immediately find the gravel. Uh, I think it was a combination of cold tyres and forgetting I'm playing project cars rather than Forza. And put it on the grass slightly there. It didn't matter, I was far too late on the brakes anyway. And that ruined my first attempt at a flying map and I don't think I actually did. no I, I didn't get one in the Diablo um, it just wasn't to be so after mucking up the final corner now we have some speed I managed to mess up the first corner um, and I don't really it didn't feel quick this car it didn't feel like I was going quick but I obviously was I was going quicker than it felt so I kept braking far too late with it um, and I'm not sure why I really don't know it's just me being a fool and then turn two again it's probably not I should have counted as we went through um, and then up here in the final corner again missing the braking point and uh, finding the gravel yet again so, it didn't take me long to get annoyed. This was recorded after work, for reference. Um, it was not a bad day at work, it was rather easy. But it's just limited time, and I thought, I'm never going to get anywhere doing this uh, with the Diablo. Uh, it got to the point where I wasn't going to be getting anywhere quick with it. So I felt I had to change car eventually. So, round here, uh, coming up to finish, what would be lap one, or lap two is that? Uh, apparently lap two, all of them dirty so far, and again completely missed the breaking point for the final corner. And uh, we swap over to the GT4, GT86. Um, and now we had different problems. It was that corner there. Um, Maybe it'd be easier to work back from the track, maybe turn 9 or 10-ish. Um, and again, the final corner, I was on the brakes a bit too hard, and I kept doing this initially. Um, where I found, I found the inside of that final corner now. I'd done the out lap fine, and the first lap fine, it was just there. I went on the brakes a bit too hard and it turned me round. Um, I guess I was already turning that way, which it made me turn in a lot earlier than I thought I would. Um, so that was not the base, best opening to a lap. And then, again, on the brakes a bit too hard um, for turn one. And I don't know why I was trying to brake so hard with this car. Again, final corner same problem braking a bit too hard um, and I found that odd I think maybe there's different you need a different amount of brake pressure for every car maybe the cars I've been using so far have had a much harder brake pressure um, it's obviously another lap invalidated and finding the inside of turn one 
So I went from braking too late to braking too early, I guess going from different cars um, didn't help. But then here I think we have actually managed to put a lap together. So we're coming up to the final corner where I got it actually right, which surprised me. I think I probably could have been quicker through there, um, but we managed to put some laps together. Uh, I went back to the pits from that after crashing into the inside corner, inside of turn one. Um, and it kept displaying this message, or kept, the guy with the radio just kept saying, oh, your brakes are overheating. Um, and I was really trying not to use them as much. So, I'm not sure why that kept happening. But turn, getting a bit of a squirm on into turn, I think that's three. Um, to the kink and then this one this kink here would be four down to the hairpin of five that one was alright this hairpin I think was generally okay getting a bit squirmy under braking and very wide of the apex there incredibly wide but we have managed to keep it clean so far um, maybe halfway through the lap if you see the sector on the track map for maybe middle of sector one bouts there. This corner again getting really squirmy on the brakes and it's a lot tighter than I thought it was. Um, it's a corner that tightens a lot and this one again um, that one needs to be careful through because you can find the grass quite easily if you try and take it flat. Just need a little lift despite the game uh, the driving line, I guess you'd call it, I think that's what it's called. The driving line says that you can take the corner flat, but you couldn't. Uh, you just need a little lift through that kink, it might be turn 11. And then finally the final corner, um, that was a stupid sentence, nearly cutting too much. And that was a bad lap, let's be honest. Uh, Suboptimal. Um, and then into turn one, we're going to get this a bit better, so we're learning the track here. Um, although I hope to repress the track and never come across it again. Um, I didn't even remember it was in Project Cars 1, I only remembered when I booted it up maybe a month, no it's going to be two, three months ago, um, recording this and four when it goes out. Because um, I'm nearly a month ahead on videos, prepping for August when I won't have any time at all to record. Um, so here, I think is where it goes wrong. On turn five, I think I tried to downshift um, into set into first, and it just didn't want to know. I think I was just a bit high in the rev range. Now I turned the car around. Uh, but that wasn't the worst uh, offence of that lap braking a bit too early for this corner and up here I think this is this is the turn I didn't like but it all wrong tried to take it flat and that's what happens when you try and take that corner flat um, it just spat me out turn me around spat me out and yeah that is not an optimal line through that corner uh, but this is the end of the lap here and we're going to see how I should properly do the lap um, or at least better than I have done previously. So the potential there is for a 49.9. I think the best is a 51.9. Um, so turn one, that is probably about as good as I took that. Uh, could have been wider on the exit. I eventually got there, but it could have been wider earlier. Here, I should have been tighter on that apex and not on the grass. And again, poor line through there, could have been on the power a bit earlier, uh, maybe a bit more on that kerb, um, in this kink, again should be much closer to that apex, shouldn't be turning as hard as that, and then this corner here, I've locked, no point doing turn numbers now, I've completely forgotten where I am, a uh, bit wide of the apex again on that one, but downshifting at the right time, not uh, getting it to spin me out. And then here, I think it's about turn 10. Um, 
yeah, that that was quite a good, quite a good corner. Could have been wider on the exit, and here just having to lift off. You saw the throttle, the green bar in the speedometer dip now um, for that kink, and on the brakes into here. So we're not we're not squirming on the brakes anymore. We've sort of worked it out, uh, having gone from that GTR where I was braking far too late. So now we're braking on time in this rather than too early. And up to the final corner, where we're going to try and take it quicker than we had done previously. So on the brakes, but not a lot, only one downshift required. Uh, could have been tighter to the apex again, could have been wider on the kerb. But that is relatively solid. Um, it's just sort of polishing up in general. So that was two seconds quicker than what we had done. And there's definitely time in the lap. So that turn one, I think I was a bit tighter and I managed to get a, not as wide up there. Um, but maybe that is a better line. We'll have a look when we get to the split. I was more on the apex and not on the grass there. Um, squirming on the brakes, so that is not ideal. And despite all that, I think... There we go, we're about three quarters of a second up. Um, missing that apex there, not being wide enough. So yeah, there was definitely time in the lap, it was just in general, and you see how much, just in the first sector, those little mistakes all added up to nearly a whole second. There's probably three or four seconds I could take out of it um, if I invested a lot of time into it. But being this track, I think it's Zoo High International, um, I hope I never have to do or I'm not ever going to choose to do the track again. Um, and yeah, there we're 1.8 seconds up now by the end of sector two. So I've gained 1.1 seconds alone in the middle sector. I think that's quite solid for turn, is that turn 11, 12, um, to sort of two corners. I think it's 14 corners in the track. Uh, that would be 13, that kink, and the final corner and it was a really good lap we were looking for a really good time uh, it was about 47 um, and yeah we just ran deep at the end um, and it got to this point uh, sort of got fed up um, after work I don't have too much time um, and along with doing the Diablo part we didn't get many laps in but I think I've done a meh sort of lap around here. I may come back to it one day uh, when I'm more in the mood to learn the circuit. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you very much for watching to the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think I've already said that. I hope to see you in the next video. And bye for now.